I'm Tom Scott. I'm Maggie Scott. And uh, we are uh, belong to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Being introduced to the church, you know, it's an amazing story, really, if you look at where we've come from. I was an evangelical pastor for 27 plus years and um, probably didn't have a whole lot of good things to say about the Latter-day Saints Church based on misinformation. But I've always been someone that sought after truth and have been concerned about what is truth. And even pastoring in different denominations and different churches, you know, there were elements of truth all along the way. And it was kind of like, almost like a building block where you would build one upon the other, upon the other, upon the other and you'd be going from one place of truth to the next. But I never in my wildest imagination thought that uh, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints was gonna be my final destination. You know, I've always taught my kids since they were real little what the Church of Jesus Christ was supposed to be. And all along the way, you would see glimpses or little pieces of the true church uh, or a, an act of kindness, but never, um, Never the way that we've seen it since we've we've uh, experienced the church that we're in now. Um, it's been probably a year and a half ago. Uh, we were considering different options. Um, we were looking at moving, and uh, for job purposes, um, we're entertaining, but just didn't have a piece about hmm. is this what we're supposed to do? And um, kind of out of the blue, when we were getting pressed to make a decision, um, came from. Uh, a gentleman that we had met not too long before in Utah did some interviewing and this all started at the beginning of May in 2011 and we called followed up and within a week we had an answer that the job was available and immediately we felt a peace that this is what we were supposed to do and we had a lot of things to consider we have um, a lot of children who was going to be going, who was going to be staying, but through all of that we knew what we were supposed to do and started making the steps in faith um, to accomplish that. Within three weeks time, God had miraculously brought the resources and all the issues that needed to be handled before we could leave were handled yeah. and at the very end of May, Tom pulled out with the van with what we were taking with us <laughs> on the trip to Utah, the people within the ward were at our door wanting to know what did we need. Mm. And I mean, at that point we were sleeping on the floors. We didn't have any furniture. So when they found out we didn't have beds, immediately they went to their house. They said, well, we have air mattresses that we, we mm. use for camping. They brought us air mattresses. They brought us linens and towels. You'll be overwhelmed by the love of the people uh, that exemplify the love of Christ in a way that you cannot even imagine. That's what drew us to the Latter-day Saints Church. The thing about coming to the point of it's true. We talked about light witnessing with light and having greater truth. And you know, you're still not at a place where you're going to think, okay, everything that I've learned for 50 years now, I'm, I'm just going to tank it. We started meeting with the missionaries uh, down the street at a neighbor's house, and, uh, and there was a Tongan missionary. And the guy, he could barely speak English. And he would sit down and we'd start the missionary discussions and he would, he was, it would be in that broken tongue in English and he would say, Heavenly Father, he love us very, very much. And he would try to continue on in the discussion and uh, he just had trouble with words. But the way that he said, the Heavenly Father loves us so very, very much, I've heard, I've heard some of the greatest orators in the world speak and preach, but nothing communicated it. And I, and I think it was that the spirit anointing that was on his life as an elder that spoke into our hearts. We really didn't talk that much about where each of us was in the decision, but it came down to one weekend where I received it, Maggie received it, and my son had received it, all within 24 hours separately without talking to each other. And it was kind of like, uh, I was thinking, oh, I'm going to talk to Maggie about this, because I mean, this is happening. I really am experiencing this. I know that this is true. Me personally, I felt impressed to just get alone with God and uh, read Romans 10. And um, so I sat down, and I wasn't, I wasn't asking, I wasn't praying, I was just doing what I felt like I was supposed to do. And as I read through that chapter, 
inside was an overwhelming sense that this was what I was supposed to do. I mean, it's easy to say, I trust God, um, but until you actually go through life and question comes up, and what's your response? I trust. Situation happens, what's your response? I trust. So in this case, when I was posed with the thought of, well, what about all that I don't know and don't understand, inside, I felt just trust. Mm. Our baptism was... It was September just, 24th. September 24th, <laughs> and it was, it was really um, a culmination of, of everything. But more than anything, it was um, knowing that the love of the Father had taken us to this point. And where we go from that point, you know, is in His hands also. This is the next step, you know, along the way. You know, why I had to wait to 50 to get to this point, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. But it was like, I knew that this was part of the plan. The overwhelming sense of there's purpose and knowing there's a plan and having the peace that there's a plan was able to help us, you know, go just trusting again that, mm -hmm. that God is working it out for everybody. You know, now it's just like, okay, we have this. And I, and I talk to guys that I work with who maybe have been in the Latter-day Saints for a while. I'm like, guys, how can you be sitting still? I mean, why are you passive? You know, I think we had a term, and I think it's still at ease in Zion. I mean, you've got, you've got the greatest thing in the world here. There's things that uh, in the Bible that uh, now in light of the truth that we've received, I read it in a completely different way, and it's like, Oh my gosh, I never I never saw it that way before. Mm -hmm. When we talked about things that would happen in our life and the, the purpose in that, well, there has to be a purpose. And then you get out here and of course you learn about the eternal family and you learn about the pre-existence and you learn about everything. And we had all of this bits and pieces and you can just see it, how it just comes together and it fits perfectly. Mm -hmm. You know, how things in the Book of Mormon simply point to Christ and you can see from both sides now it's just this giant puzzle and it just comes together and it just fit. I think the biggest thing for me is helping people to realize that this church is a true church, but it is that we're Christians. I can't fathom how I went for all those years and thought, no, I can't be Christians, other than I didn't have the right information. You go to the churches, or go to lds.org, go to mormons.org, find the right sources to find out what real truth is. I have a Heavenly Father has a plan for my life, who loves me, and who desires to see that plan walk out and fulfilled. More than anything else, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that I have a Heavenly Father that loves me right where I'm at. All my imperfection, everything that's going on in my life, He never stopped loving me. He loves me today, and He'll always love me. I know that Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world. He's my personal Savior, just for me.